Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob Sutton with Bike 198. I don't know if you've noticed a reoccurring theme here, but we are really excited about all these new Enduro full face helmets that have come out that have venting that you can wear them all day long on trail rides. So today we're actually going to look at this Pot Coron Air Spin. And I actually crash tested this one on accident. So let's get started. Down. Oh. Yeah. So before we get into the review and how this thing actually did out on the trail, let's get into the tech specs real quick so we know what we're dealing with. The Pot Coron Airspin is a certified downhill helmet with a fiberglass shell construction. It's lightweight, specifically designed to be worn all day. It is quoted with this medium large at 1170 grams, but it actually came in as tested at 1150. The helmet is integrated with patent pending spin pads, which are shearing pad inside. The idea here is it acts like MIPS, but it's inside the pad itself with silicone pads that actually take away some of those shearing forces like MIPS would do in a helmet. It has emergency removable cheek pads for added security in the case of a head or neck injury. The ear chambers are designed to support improved balance and hearing. The chin bar is constructed for optimized protection and easy breathing. The breakaway visor is designed to break off in the case of an impact to protect the rider's neck. It has a multi-impact EPP liner. All internal padding can be removed for washing and has simple and effective buckle fastening system for added security. It has an MSRP of $275, and the certifications are EN 1078 CPSC 12.03 ASTM F1952. So it covers all of your certifications for downhill if you need those. All right, guys, so the fit and finish on this POC Coron Air Spin is everything that you would come to expect from POC. All of the materials are really high quality. Even just the chin pads are incredibly comfortable when you put them on. All of the hardware is really nice, especially com when it comes to the breakaway visor. You then get a really high quality strap with a really nice buckle that secures the helmet to your chin and keeps it from moving. The first thing I noticed when I first put on this helmet is it feels a lot more like a dedicated DH helmet than some of the other Enduro style helmets that have venting. It doesn't move around on your head at all. It's a very secure fit and the pads are really thick. So you get that kind of DH feel out of this helmet with just some extra venting. The venting comes in form of five graded chin vents, seven visor location vents, and six rear and top head vents. And as you can see, the chin pads do actually remove for the helmet that was designed as part of a safety feature, but that it can also be used to cool your head down during really long climbs. So what is it like out on the trail with the Coron Air Spin? I tried to give it a really wide range of riding, everything from 30 mile trail rides to short shuttles, just to get an idea of what this helmet would be like out on the trail. And luckily I've been riding it with it long enough that we did get some rides in with it in hot, humid Georgia weather. So we could see how the venting really worked well on this helmet. Now I'll be honest, when I first took it out of the box, I was a little bit worried. It is not nearly as open vented as a lot of these full face helmets that are coming out from people like Troy Lee and Smith. They are a lot smaller graded vents and they're not quite as open. So there's a lot of surface area of the helmet that is not vented at all. I was worried it was going to be a little bit warmer than the other helmets I've tried out in the past. Well, I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised. Where they put the vents on this helmet were very strategically located. So it does a great job of letting hot air out and cool air in. Now it is a little bit warmer than the helmets that I've tested in the past, like the Smith Mainline, but I didn't notice my head really overheating on rides, which is the most important part. So while it is warmer, it's not to the point where it actually takes away from the ride at all. So Pac also did a great job of designing this chin strap on this helmet to make it not feel like you're breathing in your own hot air. I was a little bit worried about with the graded vent and how this comes a little bit closer to your face than some other full face helmets that that would become an issue. It really wasn't. Even on long climbs where I felt like I was really breathing a lot, I never felt like it was just getting really hot inside the helmet right around my mouth or that I was breathing in just the same carbon dioxide that I was blowing back out. It really did a good job of bringing new air in and getting the old air out so that you could breathe correctly with the full face helmet on. So the one thing that I didn't really end up using all that much and really not at all and hopefully never in an emergency situation is the detachable chin pads. I found that they're really hard to get off on the trail without just taking the helmet off completely and I really wouldn't know where to put them other than maybe under my goggle straps for really long climbs. I didn't find that I got hot enough that I really needed to take those out and hopefully I never have to use them in an emergency situation where my neck is actually injured, where an EMS would have to take them out. I think it's a good safety feature, but as far as just cooling your head down during long climbs, I found that the hassle of taking them out probably really wasn't worth it, so I just left them in. 
So let's talk about what I really liked about this helmet first. One, the breakaway visor. And this is for several different reasons. One, I did mention I did crash test this helmet and I did drag my head against the ground for a pretty long distance. It wasn't all that much fun. I'm pretty sure I've got some rotator cuff damage still from that wreck. But the breakaway visor did exactly what it said it was going to. When my head hit the ground, it tore off without breaking anything on the helmet. The visor was fine, the helmet was fine, it just needed a good cleaning and it got a couple scratches. But it kept my head from actually rotating on the ground or the visor grabbing the dirt and pulling my head in a different direction. So I really like the design of this breakaway visor, even if it doesn't have any adjustment to it, so you can't like adjust the angle of it. I like the feature of it breaking away. There's also a side benefit to this breakaway visor that I don't find a lot of people talking about, and that's goggle storage. You can actually just pull your goggles up and let the breakaway visor slip back for climbs, and then when you come back down for the descent, you just pull the goggles down and push the breakaway visor down, and you're set and ready to go. It makes it for goggle storage really simple and easy, so you don't have to sit there and stop on the trail all the time and get resituated before you're ready to go downhill. The other thing I really liked about this helmet is the buckled chin strap. It's very important to me with these enduro style helmets to be able to get it on and off very easily. So when you get to a top of a climb and you wanna sit there and talk to people for a little bit before you hit the descent, you don't have to sit there and fiddle with a D-ring strap trying to get your helmet off with sweaty goggles. The buckle comes undone really quickly. You're able to pull the helmet off and put it back on and get it buckled quickly to go back down the downhill. I found with ones like the Smith Mainline, I found myself sitting there fiddling with the D-ring strap more than I really would have liked to. So the on and off with this helmet when you're doing trail rides with groups is a lot easier than some of the other ones on the market. The other thing I really liked is the design and the build quality for the price. Now I know you're not normally used to hearing that out of POC products. Normally they're at a premium, not a discount, but at $275, this actually comes in at $25 less than helmets like the Troy Lee Stage or the Smith Mainline. So it's actually a cost benefit where you normally don't see it out of this brand. So what did I not like about the Pac Coron Air Spin? And we're going to get a little bit picky here because I actually really do like the helmet. One, it has graded vents. Now it's great for not letting, you know, outside objects into like tree branches, but it's horrible when you're trying to just get a drink on the trail. So one of the things I really liked about some of the other vented helmets out on the market is they had a really big open vent that you could get a straw through from your hydration pack. You can't do that with the POC. You gotta do that kind of awkward fiddle up and get it in between the chin strap and your mouth. So I would have liked to see actually open air vents here instead of graded, because I'd give up some of that protection from tree limbs coming in, which is all very, very rare to happen for a little bit more ease of use on the trail, especially while climbing. The other thing is there's, there's not really a lot of adjustability to this helmet. POC does give you this bag of pads it's basically adhesive pads that you put inside the helmet to make it bigger if you need to. So with these kind of helmets, it's a lot easier if they supply additional pads that are different sizes to swap out. Now I understand why POC does not do that with this helmet. It's a lot easier to do with helmets that integrate MIPS or some other form of protection for the torsional forces. With the spin pads, it's a lot more expensive and they're a lot thicker. So providing extra pads with the helmet doesn't make a whole lot of sense from the cost end. But what it does mean for you is that one, they're adhesive pads, so once you put them in, you're kind of done. And two, it's a lot more fiddling with it to get the right fit. Luckily, I didn't have to use any of these. It fit great right out of the box, but if you're going to have to adjust this helmet for your head, it is a little bit harder than the other ones on the market. And then the last thing, which is really just kind of silly, is they give you a white storage bag to actually store this helmet in. Now, I don't know about you guys, but all my mountain biking stuff is incredibly dirty, and if you're expecting that white bag to stay white, it's not going to. It would have been nice to have a black bag to actually put this helmet in that I didn't have to worry about it looking like crap after the first ride when I throw everything in my back of my truck and it rattles around with the rest of my hydration pack and other things that are just dirty. So it would have been nice. Include a black bag, not a white one. I don't feel like cleaning my helmet bags all the time. So guys, overall, I really like this helmet. I like the fact that it does not make any noise on the trail because their spin pads do not move at all like you do with some MIP systems on these full face helmets that have more weight and leverage. The integration with the Aura goggles is actually almost about perfect and the vents that are right above the helmet, above the goggles, keep them from fogging up and it creates a really nice look when both lines kind of just mate with each other and you don't have any weird gaps like you get with some goggles. The venting on this was strategically placed even if they are smaller, so it does a great job out on the trail, even in hot weather, of keeping your head as cool as possible under a full face helmet. There will be more that vent better and release more hot air and get more air in, but it does an adequate job on the trail for the extra protection you get without having as many vents. Again, the build quality is POC 
quality all the way through for a discounted price of $275, which is really hard to argue with. Now, like I said, I crash tested it and it worked out great. So I really enjoyed this helmet. It's been a great helmet for these longer climbs to longer descents where I want that added protection going downhill that I don't smash my face and run into issues like I talked about in a previous video where I still have nerve damage along my jawline. So guys, I wanna hear what you think. Have you ridden with the Pac Coron Air Spin? What do you think about it? And are you riding with a vented full face helmet now too? I wanna to hear down in the comment section below. If you liked this review, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Bike 198 for more mountain biking gear reviews and bike reviews here in the future. And until then, on to the next one. Thanks guys, see ya.